how does shutter speed affect video, especially when it comes to filming wildlife? And that's something I'm gonna look at today is how adjusting your shutter speed can have different effects on the video and how it looks and feels um, just based on using different shutter speed settings. have a basic understanding of how shutter speed works with video. I think the easiest way to get an understanding of it is just to imagine that every single frame of a video is a photo because that's basically all video is is just a bunch of photos played in rapid succession. So if we take a standard frame rate which is 24 frames per second which is kind of a cinematography standard and that's what most videos and movies are kind of filmed at will be 24 frames a second and then the standard for that is to have your shutter speed be half or double however you want to look at it of your frame so it would be a 24 frame per second video with a 1 48th shutter speed and all that means is that for every frame of the video a half of that is exposed by the shutter the 180 degree shutter rule is just saying that half of your frame is going to be exposed by the shutter don't ever complicate this because it can get confusing when you're talking about degrees and shutter. This is all based on old rotary shutters that don't, we don't use anymore. And most modern digital cameras, we just go off shutter speed. So to make this simple, we'll just talk through this in shutter speed. If you're 24 frames per second, your shutter speed would be 1 48th. And if it's 30 frames per second, your shutter speed would be 1 60th, so on and so forth. Today I want to throw that rule out the window and experiment with some different shutter speeds. And the reason for this is I've noticed shooting at this 180 degree shutter rule that some fast flying birds you get a little bit more motion blur in there than I think I really would like so we're gonna experiment with some higher shutter speeds the reason that shutter speed affects motion in your video is the same as it does with photography the longer the shutters open the more the sensors exposed the more it is allowed to move throughout the frame during that time period so as you get faster and faster shutter speeds less and less motion will be captured less and less blur the side effect of this though in video since you're basically playing rapid photos in succession is if you completely remove the motion blur your video can start to look very choppy um, because you're you're jumping from sharp frame to sharp frame whereas if you have slower shutter speeds there's a little bit of blur in each frame which will help blend into the next frame sometimes this is a artistic uh, decision to do in video there are some videos out there especially i think it was saving private ryan they did the beach scene with a very high shutter speed and this is to emphasize kind of the erratic and um, very intense nature of the scene but it does tend to look a little unnatural so what I'll try to find is where's the balance between having enough motion blur and sharp enough so we don't get too jerky a photo and it doesn't look super unnatural but still captures what we're trying to get after one final thing to consider is as you're increasing your shutter speed you're essentially capturing less and less of that time within that frame so if you're shooting at say 30 frames per second you're getting 30 photos per second essentially and then you're exposing for a fraction of each of those photos so that gap in between when the shutter is not exposed you're not actually recording anything so you'll have a lot of gaps in between each frame depending on how fast you put your shutter speed and like I said before, the issue with that is you can start to get really jittery, jerky motion. I like to use slow motion in wildlife because I feel like it better emphasizes and captures the moments. Um, wildlife tends to be very quick and erratic and all over the place. So it's hard to, even if you film at full speed, other than like birds sitting on a perch, it tends to be kind of very quick, darty. Um, you don't have time to really appreciate what you're looking at. So I like to slow a lot of the video down. So what I'm gonna shoot at today, we're gonna keep the standard for all the shots is 120 frames per second at 4K and then we're going to slow it down to a 30 frame per second timeline. So basically everything's gonna be shot at a, and played back at a quarter speed. Here's a more extreme example of high shutter speed. You can see as the wings flap, you get more of this juttery, jittery motion. Though honestly, it doesn't look terrible and it's still usable. While I was filming this, I got a little kingfisher that flew by in front of the frame. Now to contrast this with the previous clip, this is shot with a more standard shutter speed for the frame rate that we're using. If we go frame by frame, you can see on the left, a lot more blur on the wingtips in comparison to the swan on the right. 
to be honest, in scenes without a ton of motion going on, it doesn't make a huge difference visually with the shutter speed, though in the 1-1000 shutter speed you can see the raindrops are a little more pronounced and more blurred and smoothed out in the lower shutter speeds. I noticed early on in these tests that I tended to prefer around the 1 500th to 1 1000th shutter speeds, which equates to about a 90 to 45 degree shutter angle. That just seemed like a good balance of what I was looking for. And this is all very subjective. There's no real right or wrong answer here. It can vary from person to person on what you prefer. And this also varies greatly depending on what you're shooting. So if you're shooting a lot of fast motion, obviously your shutter speed is going to have a lot bigger impact than if you're just shooting still or slow moving subjects. But overall, I think one of the big takeaways is that, yes, the shutter speed has an impact, but when you're doing stuff like this, where you're shooting wildlife, wandering around, and I do a lot more running gun style, you can have a little bit of flexibility in your shutter speed. Why that's important is because as things pop up and lighting's constantly changing, you're not setting up your camera, you're not using ND filters to properly expose every single scene, and having the flexibility to adjust your shutter speed on the fly to get the correct exposure for the shot is a little more important than getting it perfectly right with the shutter speed. When shooting video outside of wildlife, I do tend to follow the 180 degree rule, as this does tend to lead to more natural pleasing results. However, when shooting wildlife, I think I actually prefer the higher shutter speeds. And like the rule of thirds in photography, it's a great guideline, but it's almost more important to understand why it's a guideline, why it's a rule, and when to break it than it is to just follow it blindly. There are different opinions on this, so don't get too tied up in it. Experiment and see what you like best. It's not always going to work out, and that's okay. It's more about learning and just getting out and enjoying this beautiful world that we live in.